Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. It's me, Zeschel, and uh, today I'm going to be going on to a road trip. It's not going to be a very long road trip, just like a few days, but... Stick around to the end of the video to hear about a big announcement, including Mark Rober and Mr. Beast. Day 1. We're going to be driving up there, driving down the valley, seeing how cold it is, and depending on what the weather is, we're going to be going over the pass, the highest pass in all of Switzerland. Once we're in Tessin, we're going to be meeting one of my grandpa's old friends, and maybe doing some other cool stuff. But anyway, let's get into an epic travel montage. Welcome to Bitch. This is the Ulrichen airport. I'm gonna land there in my flight simulator. Okay, so here we are. We're about to land. Put the flaps down and put the gear down. Okay, line there, up. Okay, here we go. Coming in for the landing. Let's uh, make sure that this is a smooth one. Now put the nose up before we hit the ground. Touchdown. That was a pretty good landing. Back to the montage. <laughs> This mountain is called Blindenhorn, and it's 3,300 meters high. Here we are at the top of the Nufnen Pass, and uh, like always, there was a absolutely amazing view. Then we drove down the other side of the mountain. There's a bunch of cars waiting for the Gotthard Tunnel. That is the longest tunnel in the world, 57 kilometers long. And as you can see, quite a bit of people wanted to go through it. Okay, we've arrived in the canton of Tessin. I can already notice that all of the trees and everything is way more tropical here, kind of like Italy, like last year. We're around like half an hour away from where we're trying to get to, so we're almost there. We got to this big castle, it was in the city of Bellizona, and uh, yeah, well, I walked around a bit, got some nice videos and some photos, it's pretty cool. We drove out of the city, then up through these little mountains until we got to the town of Santa Maria. We visited my grandpa's friend named Dante, and uh, we had dinner there, and yeah. Good night, see you tomorrow. Bye. Day two. We said goodbye to our friend Dante, and then we walked up this little walkway into this church with a little tower. Okay, now we're going to go into this big church, and then afterwards we're going to go up to the big castle up there. This church was estimated to be built in the year 1000, with the first documentation being in 1200, and then it got a big renovation in 1600. We walked up this big staircase, it was pretty cool, 
It was all old and made out of stone. This is one of the rooms that the soldiers would sleep in, while the other one would be up on the tower doing a shift. This is the toilet. Once we'd finished walking to the shop, we were greeted with another outstanding view. Here we are in this castle from the year 1400, and this was used as a like communication system with the castle that was way up the valley. So if they saw like a big army or something coming, they would light their big torch, and then from here, you could see the flame coming, you'd light your own torch, and then the next castle would light their torch until it got to the castle that we were at yesterday. So that would uh, warn the king or the queen or whoever is like there, that there's like an army coming. Then we left, and I'm just wondering, am I the first person to make a video like right here? Tell me what you think in the comments. Then we merged onto the big highway. Right up there on the mountain is the tower that we were just at. Okay, while we were driving on the highway, we saw this big castle, so we decided to go visit it. It's called Mezoko, and I'm not quite sure how old it is, but we'll probably figure it out. So, let's see if we can walk inside and get some nice photos. It's unsure when this castle was originally built, but it was one of the main castles in this valley, and uh, in 1526 it was destroyed by some army. I'm not sure which one though. I think this is the one that the other castle would communicate with about the army thing. But yeah, this thing is pretty giant and insane. This tower was built in 1067. This is the old church, you can see the little altar there. Then we got back on the road, now we're on our way into Graubunden, the next canton beside Tessin. To go over this bridge, we are officially in Liechtenstein. Welcome to Liechtenstein, the 13th country on my list. That's a lucky number. Subscribe. We tried to walk around a bit through Liechtenstein to see what there was to see. This is one of the smallest countries in the world with a population of 38,000 people and an area of 160 kilometers squared. That's about the size of downtown Vancouver. Final verdict, I think I'll give it maybe a 5 out of 10. It was pretty boring, a lot of like rich people things, and not very many people walking around, didn't feel very lively. Pretty much just felt like Switzerland. So if you're going past, might as well go and visit it to get another country on your list, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, we're on our way out of Liechtenstein. Uh, I didn't find it that amazing. I mean, no offense to my Liechtensteinian viewers, but eh, it's kind of boring. I mean, we tried to walk around the old city for a little bit, and yeah, I don't know. Anyway, now we're going to be going back into Switzerland. This is definitely the most cantons I've ever been in in one day. So in the morning, we left from Tessin, drove through Graubünden, Went through Liechtenstein, which isn't a canton, but whatever, I'm putting it on here anyway. Drove through St. Gallen, Glarus, Schwitz, Zug, Canton Zurich, Lucerne. Uh, we picked up my basketball net, then we went into Bern, and then stayed the night in our little apartment. Day 3. Good morning everyone, it's me, Seshul. Obviously, we've just left our little apartment, and now we're on our way back to our house in the Valleys. So, we're just driving through Gruyere right now, which, if you have any knowledge of cheese, is the name of a cheese. And that cheese is from this area, and there are some hot air balloons right now, and it's a very nice photo. Here's my nice photo that I took. 
Okay, we've driven a bit further, and now we're in St. Maurice, and this is supposed to be a really cool temple up here that we're gonna go visit. It was from this saint from like 2,000 years ago, so they made a temple for him, and yeah, let's go visit it. It took us like maybe 15 minutes to walk up this little path, but I thought it was like right up the little hill here, but it turned out it was like on the side of the cliff. It was a really cool mixture of like really old, and then the inside was kind of modern with like glass and so. They had a tiny little cable car here that they could transfer supplies up and down with. Here we have another epic panorama view. Then we walked back down the mountain. You guys remember like two years ago when Mark Rober, Mr. Beast, and a bunch of different YouTubers did the whole thing called Team Trees? where they tried to raise 20 million dollars to try to plant 20 million trees. Well, they're back. Me and Mark Rober have personally worked together to create Team C's. I mean, not me and Mark Rober, it was Mr. Weiss was also part of our little group. But uh, yeah, Team C's. We're all gonna be trying to make videos about oceans and so, and I would have made a vlog going to the ocean, but if anyone has been paying attention to my videos, I'm in Switzerland, and Switzerland doesn't have an ocean. Everyone likes oceans, right? Like swimming in them, doing whatever you like to do in oceans, but like people are just like putting so much plastic into oceans right now. If you want to help make a difference, go to teamseas.org and donate however much you want. Every dollar that you donate, you'll be removing one pound of waste from the ocean. This year, instead of trying to raise 20 million dollars, they're trying to raise 30 million dollars. So trying to remove 30 million pounds of garbage from the ocean. That is 13,607,771 kilos of garbage. That's a lot of garbage. We're trying to raise 30 million dollars, and I honestly think that we can easily do it. Like, we did it two years ago with the 20 million dollars, and that was like, that was, it was, it was a little bit difficult, but I know that we can do the challenge of 30 million dollars. So, Go in the description to teamseas.org to donate some money. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name's Eshel, you're special.